I'm still experimenting with these king oysters in the blue tubs. You can see the uncased one. I'm still making pins all around it. A lot of them crammed up in between the tub and the blocks. Now remember too, I didn't mix up the mycelium for this one. So hopefully there'll be no problems because of that. I do see a couple very tiny spots of where there was an exposed grain still. The green will need to take a spoon and gouge that out a little bit. But the mushrooms that are growing are starting to grow their caps out, which is good. Kind of looks like it's going to work to try to make very large mushrooms, so I'm still going to try to avoid that. This one over here that had the uh, original casing that I tried, it just wouldn't do anything. Never pinned, never did anything, so I decided to scrape the top off because I believe everything else is good. And hopefully uh, I'll get some action from it. Kind of like how I handled the original case blocks that had problems where I scraped off uh, the casing mix and I just let it fruit and it did okay. And I see a small mold problem in this one too. Hopefully uh, just because of us uh, exposed grain. These ones where I've let the casing mix get fully colonized are doing okay, I guess. Their uh, pins are coming up. See, this one's got some pins going too. Still mostly around the edge. Now this one where I had, I just left it be with a regular casing. Uh, I don't know if it's doing good or not. It kind of looks like some of the mushrooms are giving up. So might just uh, probably pick off what's good again and then scrape off the top. I really think this uh, peat moss really isn't peat moss. I think I bet, I bet they've mixed it in with old mulch, maybe some dead animals and trash and junk. I don't know. Whatever, whatever kind of filler, but it's got some nastiness in it that uh, really isn't good, especially like I was showing you before where other mushrooms are growing out of it. Something else I'm going to try next is keeping the mushrooms in the bag, not using the tubs, but breaking up the mycelium <clears throat> and mixing it, it up in the bag and then immediately putting a, uh, a layer of vermiculite casing on top of that, letting it colonize for a little bit and then put it down here with just the bags and the casing mix of vermiculite. But that way, hopefully, because I've mixed up the sawdust, it'll reset the pinning triggers, and that way it'll pin less off the uh, insides of the block between the plastic, and it'll get all the triggers to pin off the top. So that's, that's my next plan of action to try. Also, some of these bins I'm trying to keep more flooded like this one and some of them I'm trying to keep a little more uh, just just wet no flooding so I want to see where, what works best I'm really hoping I get some great results with this I could you know see just a big sheet of the king oysters growing on top so I'll keep trying you know if it don't work to my liking I'll figure out something else but I gotta make these work Got to make it work efficiently, and uh, I really don't want to go back to doing it this method, but we'll see. So, give it a few more days, or another week or two, at least to see how these ones finish up. And then we'll try some different angles to make uh, this casing business work. Well, here's where I am at the moment. I've already picked a few off this and had a few mushrooms that aborted, but you can see I have some that are still growing, so it's doing okay. The center still dries out a bit, but I've decided that flooding these really just isn't an option. I had to throw out a couple more bins, and I'm pretty sure that flooding the top of the uh, either bare or cased mycelium 
is definitely causing problems. You can see where I've had to scoop a few bad spots out of this one that um, I let colonize for a good bit before I opened it up. But these ones that I've made that I've made sure not to flow the top of it. You can see it's pinning pretty well. Some good fat pins on it, even in the center. And I've done uh, some sampling of the vermiculite in the center. It's still moist, so that's good. So I'm thinking hopefully the vermiculite will work in the setup. But I pretty much decided that I'm going to go ahead and go back to using just the bags and put the bags in the bins to colonize the casing layer on top again. You can see I got them four to a bin with about three decent scoops of vermiculite and lime pasteurized on top. Now, I don't have the vermiculite soaking wet. It's just as the dampness at which it came out with the recipe. You shouldn't have any standing liquid in it. I, I've decided too that an overly wet casing mix can cause problems. But for the most part, it's been this bad casing mix that's been screwing me over or the bad peat moss rather. So I'm, I'm gonna try letting these ones fully colonized, like here's one that I got the vermiculite casing that I'm just gonna let fully colonize and wait till it starts pinning inside the bins like they were before with the 50-50 mix um, upstairs where uh, they pinned before I put them down here in the basement. So I'm thinking that letting them uh, get to the point where they pin on top before you take the lid off gives it a bit of a head start where there's no spores resting on top of it. Even though I keep it clean in here, it still pulls plenty of air from the rest of the house. And uh, uh, it keeps the moisture in and the king oysters, will, as you've seen, will still pin with the lid on it and vent it just uh, once or twice a day. Because I, all I do is I open it up and give it a waft and leave the lid on there loosely, but not where there's any large open spaces where the uh, casing mix can dry out. So all these two, I've only given a very light misting. I try to kind of meter it the same amount that I would for all these blocks. You can see where I've restripped the old peat moss top off and they still fruit actually mostly from the, uh, the casing mix. But not a lot of problems because I get the right amount of moisture on there. So let's check back in and see if this idea of letting them pin inside the uh, tubs like that and not using that peat moss is going to do a good pin set not create a whole lot of pins off the sides of the bag and uh, hopefully give us a consistent two pounds again I've done some major cleaning you can see that I've removed every sawdust block that was old my newer stuff over here and except for the ones that still have a decent sized mushroom growing on them. As soon as I cut the mushroom off, I'll take it out to the compost pile as well. My fingers are aching me because I probably took about, oh, five, six hundred pounds worth of wet sawdust. But it was starting to screw up everything that I had down here new. I was actually getting some mold on these newer blocks. You can see I have these blocks that were fully cased with vermiculite and I've taken them out. Now initially 
I was misting everything down here the same twice a day, but I started running into problems. That's why you see these two blocks on their side. And for instance, back here, you see this block producing orange metabolite. Whenever you see a lot of metabolite like that, it's a sure sign that there's some sort of contamination, very light going on, whether it's bacterial or mold, usually bacterial. But bacteria almost, almost always hits first before the mold and creates a space for it. You can see over here, here's one that's quite a bit that I'll probably turn on side. But the good news is I have some mushroom pins growing. And you can even see this, these last two bins I have not misted, and they're actually starting to pin pretty well. And I can take a sampling of the vermiculite from the center and give it a squeeze, and water still squishes out, so it's still moist. And that is because I have increased my humidity in here. You can see my ultrasonic pond foggers making pond fog like crazy. That's because I've, I ordered new ceramic discs for them. The other ones I kind of didn't care for. They'd lime up really bad and then I'd take a metal knife or something like that and scratch the lime off, which ended up scratching the face of the, the disc. That caused the problem, kind of, uh, less of the efficiency of the fog being created. So now with new discs, and I've also added a, another additional unit. If you remember right, I have all individual units. It's making a huge amount of fog. Also another upgrade I've made is I've added this six inch light duct ventilation. It's light and flexible. They can pay about $24 for 25 feet and it's going to one of my air intakes. I just have the shutter uh, clipped open and I don't have a fan or anything sucking the air in. It's just the, uh, the vacuum that's being created by two fans now. One running at 50% so I got it at 150% suction going on plus the intake from my original uh, box filter that's coming in from the cold air return of the, of the uh, furnace system and this you can, you can feel the air coming in from outside now again that's not filtered air what I'm going to eventually do is build a large 20 by 20 filter box that I can pump both systems through and 20 by 20 fillers are really about the most efficient for the price because uh, really almost all fillers cost about the same no matter the size. So all that's increased the humidity in here. You can see the floor is pretty wet and I just washed everything down this morning after cleaning everything out. Also gave it some a light bleaching spray around the walls to clean up any uh, black mold spores that might be on there and other spores. But just really a heavy rinse is uh, good enough. But again, you can see for the, the excess moisture from misting them was causing all this metabolite that I can drip off there. But now I've decided that I'm just not going to mist at all unless I see some uh, definite drying out and also too the new blocks I'm making I'm being sure to add an inch of plastic above the casing mix so let your bags go for about 10 days for the mycelium to grow up that high into the bits of sawdust on the side of the bag so they don't cause any problems and then again, use a sanitary thumb to wipe off the excess mycelium off the sides of the bags and then case. 